On the Boat 70, Tips, Dribbles and Trips. We meet a silent dance troupe. We show you our real easy quick fit sunshade. So we find a beach full of tribbles. So and we take another look at wind and how it makes your boat go forward. And the ladies take a girly day out. A few days before we were due to leave Marzamemi, the girls and I decided to have a day out in the nearest town. The marina very kindly lent us their car, so we set off bright and early one morning and went into the ancient city of Notto. We climbed up the steps to go and have a look inside the cathedral. Inside the cathedral was this scale model made out of wood. The original cathedral had been destroyed in an earthquake in 1636, so this was obviously rebuilt. The painted ceilings were absolutely amazing. The stained glass windows seemed to reflect the light completely around the cathedral. Defined as the capital of Baroque in 2002, its historic centre was declared a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. You can see why. This ceiling is inside the Church of San Demonico. Look at the richness there. We thought these were painted steps, but on closer inspection, they've actually got material laid on the risers. The architecture throughout the city was absolutely amazing. We had a lovely day. It's our last night in Marzamimi, so we decide we're going to go out for a beer. Practicing in the car park is one of these silent dance troops. Really quite funny to watch. When we get to the old town, there's another wedding going on. The groom is pretending to polish the hubcaps of this Alfa Romeo with the wedding dress. Well, with the end of the season fast approaching and the weather becoming less predictable, it was time to head back to our winter berthing. Shame to leave Mars and Memi, it's a lovely place. can see our dinghies tied on the front. Once we get into some open water, we'll bring it round the back and put it back up on the davits. With very light winds at 12 to 14 degrees apparent, we weren't going to be able to sail on this part of the trip. We decided to go round to this place. We've been there before, the unfinished marina at Porto Paolo. There were strong westerlies forecast and quite a big southwest swell, so we tucked ourselves into the corner for the night. This is one of the three or four beaches inside the harbour. There's a small marine workshop place over the back but mainly it's residential. Babe, I think they're trebles.
Oh, they're lovely. So friendly. Yeah, they're so friendly. Yeah, but there's a trouble with trebles. Okay, I'll admit it. I'm a bit of a trekkie. One day you've got half a dozen or so trebles. The next day you've got trouble with trebles. The next day we left really early. We decided to go into Ragusa as there was a storm forecast late that afternoon. We're really glad we did. This is a screenshot from Windy that afternoon, just after we got in. With two and a half metre swell and a short wave period, we decided to stay two days in Ragusa. But then we were off again. And this time, well, the weather was much better. And we got 39 apparent on our course. It was time to start sailing. At the request of some of our viewers, we're going to do a bit more on wind. Now, modern sailing boats, sails, work like an aircraft wing. You don't actually get blown along, you get sucked along. Here's how it works. The boat's sails are actually just like an aircraft wing. As the air passes over the sail, or over the wing, the air on the underside has a shorter distance to travel than the air on the upper side. The air on the upper surface of the wing, or sail, the curved part, has to travel further, and therefore faster, to meet the back of the sail or wing at the same time. And it's this which causes lift on the top surface. And this lift is caused by low pressure. The low pressure on top of the wing sucks the wing upwards, creating lift. The bigger the imbalance between the upper and lower surfaces, the greater the lift. And it's this lift which would keep your aeroplane flying. The low pressure on the top of the wing lifts the aircraft upwards. Simples. So if we take our aircraft wing, we turn it on its end and make it more, well, sail shaped, you can see where the lift is being generated. A lot of lift at the bottom of the sail, quite a bit in the middle and less at the top. And that's due to its shape and the difference between the distance the air has to travel on the inside of the sail and the outside of the sail. So when you're sailing slowly in light winds, you need more lift. When an aircraft needs more lift, when it's flying slowly and the winds are slower, it puts down its flaps, and this increases the curve or the distance the air has to flow over the wing. And we can do exactly the same with our sail. If we put a bigger curve in the sail, we get more lift. When the air is moving faster over the sail, we want a flatter shape, so there's less friction, but also less relative lift. That's why we flatten the sails when the wind gets stronger, or we decrease their size by reefing them. So flattening the sails, or making the sail smaller, reefing it, gives us less lift. Ah, I hear you say, but if the lift is trying to push the boat sideways, what makes a yacht go forwards. Well modern boats, as well as having a hull that's in the water, have a long keel that's in the water as well. The keel and the underwater sections of the boat stop it from going sideways, enhancing its movements forwards. The heavy weight of the keel works as ballast and stops the boat from being pushed over by the lift generated from the sails. So last week we told you that our jib is only 105%. This illustration shows a jib that's about 140%. So why would we say that a 105% jib is better going upwind when the apparent wind is, say, less than 80? Well, it's to do with aerodynamics. Remember our aeroplane wing? Modern yachts are fractionally rigged. That's one reason. But the other reason is that the smaller jib allows the air to be accelerated over the mainsail and between the main and the jib. This accelerated air gives additional lift from the large main, making the boat faster for the same amount of sail, or even less. The smaller jib also allows you to bring it in closer to the centre line of the boat, and that in turn allows you to sail closer to the wind. And fractionally rigged boats, boats whose forestays don't go right to the top of the mast, are able to bend the top of the mast backwards much easier than a conventionally rigged boat. And bending the mast backwards enables you to flatten the sail and take the lift area further up the sail, from lower down. 
Okay, I haven't gone into a lot of detail, and yes, I've oversimplified things. But if you'd like us to do a series of videos on sail trimming, both practical and theory, well, say so in the comments, and we'll see what we can do. So a couple of years ago we bought this sun cover or boom tent. We thought we'd show you how quickly it goes up. It protects the boat from the sun, keeps the insides nice and cool. You can also open up the hatches underneath it, even when it's raining. It takes just a few minutes to put up, and it was, well, 39 euros, about 42 dollars. We'll leave a link in the description so you can get one for yourself. But it's cheap, it's quick, and it's easy. You could pay a few hundred bucks for something similar or if you made it yourself from Sunbrella. It comes with all the lanyards and reinforced eyelets in the corners but we've added a few extras so that we can raise it up in the centre with our topping lift and pull it fore and aft along the boom with an extra lanyard. I'll show you those in a second. And there we are, done, boom tent. David's got one that's the same and it goes over the top of his stacker pack bag. So. 3 metres by 4 metres, or roughly 4.5 yards by 3.5 yards, something like that. 39 euros, 42 dollars. So we put three extra eyelets in it. One four, one in the centre, and one aft. We can then tighten the centre of the boom tent over the boom, keeps it nice and straight. I've just got the rear one and the front ones to put on now. Couple of seconds. Patreons support the making of these videos. They don't support our lifestyle. The money that we get from Patreons and from YouTube goes towards better equipment like cameras, gimbals, headsets and data that we have to purchase for uploading these videos to YouTube. If you're not a patron, why don't you pop over to our Patreon page, the link's in the description, or you can use this one here. We'd love to have you on board and Patreons get lots of other things, like real-time updates, tracking facilities, they can tell exactly where we are at any given time. Patrons can send us messages and take part in our Patreon forum. We can answer technical questions, get suggestions for them from videos and much more. So if you're not a Patreon, come on! Join the crew! Next time, the Harleys are in town. And I do love a motorbike. Thanks for watching. Sail safe.